Well, what are we fixing today? Today we're going to show you a little twist on something that I've done in, uh, in another video years ago now. I make these uh, Tin Men out of tin cans and whatever I can find. During the holidays, we found that people like Grinches. Grinches. So we're going to take this little plastic Grinch head and we're going to take some fabric Grinch feet or who feet or something. And we're going to make a Grinch and we're going to make several Grinches. Um, I got four here to make. I got one started. So let's, let's work on that. That's today's task. We got to get these done for Saturday because they're going to a craft sale. So let's go work on that. Well, here's the one I got started already. Um, I had to do a little testing and stuff. And uh, so this is the way they look uh, part way through. We'll pick this one up where it is. I didn't have these cans at the time. Now, these are cans from uh, V8 Juice. I needed some small cans. I didn't have enough. So yesterday when I started working on this and I was doing some samples, I didn't uh, I didn't have enough parts, so I had to drink drink some more V8 in order to get these cans, and then I had to paint them. So, all right, show you how this looks. I'm just drilling a hole up in here, and I'm taking the drill and tipping it. Get a little hole in the side. Here, I'll show you how these go in later, but I am opening this up a little bit. I take this and I'm sighting, you can't see it, but I'm looking down this hole and out that hole into the light and I'm lining it up with the end of this. So, one eye, one horn, flying purple thief leader. I'll stick this in here and stick it in there. And get it to come out there. And this is twisted up like that, and I squeeze this down. This one happens to have some fluffy paint, which can all go away, like so, and like so. Stretch this open a little bit. And sight here, there, get the look at the end of the hook. Sometimes it's easier than others. There we go. Got it to come through full of them. And away we go. So now the Grinch has arms. And the new addition is this. So these are legs. So what she wants me to do is drill a hole up in here. So let's do that. So I'll take my step drill and it's going to drill a hole like so. Now she's going to take this. He's going to stuff this up in the hole, so the feet will, you know, she's going to cut this off, obviously, and stick the feet in there, so that'll look kind of cute, and then she's got a scarf to put on it, so that's going to be what they look like. Now let's start closer to scratch. We'll do this one from the beginning. Got a head. And what this is, is, I don't know, she bought these online somewhere. They actually are a candy dish, I think, because you see it opens up like that. So, you know, 
It's kind of, I, but I don't care about that. What I care about is making it work. So here I have a body. Here I have a couple legs. So these were normally silver. This is what this is what these were originally. I took off the handle because I didn't need it, and I painted it. That. Uh, This is the color I use for my Grinches. Satin Green Apple from Rust-Oleum 2X Cover. <coughs> the uh, best paint ever, I think. So, we're going to start with getting the head on. But here I'm going to use two, because I only got really got room for two. I only need two to hold it also. So. I have this template, which used to be the three template, but now I got just two holes that I'm going to use for this. I'm going to pick a spot here, kind of line it up roughly where I need it. I don't want to drill out here, it's got to be drilled within this space. So. I got two holes, they're a little off center, but he's going to have his head turned a little, that's all. So which way did I turn it? Turned it this way. So we'll turn it this way a little bit here. Find a spot, middle-ish. I use these holes for legs, so that's why I'm keeping those on the side. Close enough. Now I gotta get a couple of my long rivets. I use long ones in the heads because it has less chance of coming out. And the only way to reach this is this, this is the only really specialty tool I have in the whole business here. This is a a gun that you can turn like that or you can turn like this. I always use it like this because I need to reach into holes. So, put this in here. Now I need to make this small. It means I have to squeeze it, but I can't expand this, right? So I bring it over to, so there's a gap here, ish. And I close this and let it pull in. And I don't want it to pull in far enough that it bulges it. And I want to get this hooked. So now I can kind of deal with this. So I'll pick a hole. This is the back one. And the back one. This is pretty good in the hole that I drilled. I take this and turn it around. Ish. Just kind of all hold it together here. Okay, put in another rivet, leave a gap, squeeze it down, hook it. Now I gotta get the hole lined up. There's the hole. Get this through both pieces, both the metal and the plastic. Just sometimes easier said than done. the metal. I'm through the plastic. Okay. I like to turn this away from the center and squeeze it. Alright. Well the head's on. Two rivets in the bottom, like a so. So now we have to make the facility to hang it. What I've been hanging these with 
is some chain. Let's use this black chain. A little different than I'm used to, but that's okay. Take a piece of wire, because I need wire with this. And here is a chunk of a lid. Started out like that. Cut it into pie shapes. And what I use this for is this is what holds the end of the chain in the bottom. I take, see what I'm doing here? I'm just making the end of this stronger by using this material and double tripling it. Like so. So I kind of rolled that up on there. It just makes that stronger. Something to pull on. And I'm going to take a piece of wire. Go through it. And then go through the chain. And just squeeze this up, wrap it up. I don't care if there's an end on it, doesn't matter. This is going to go, oh, this then goes through there. Now I have to drill a hole in here so that the chain comes through, and I drill a hole here so the chain comes out. So let's do that. It's going to be hard to see, but I am just taking the drill and I'm drilling the center out, making a hole. There we have a hole. Can you see it? And then we're going to put another hole in the top. And the plastic, I'm going to start with this. Saves me from slipping. This is a tiny chain, so I shouldn't need any more than that. Now I have a hole through. I'll pick this up by the thing I made. I'm going to run this down through the hole. Like so. Now I have a place in the center to hold it. It's held against something fairly really solid, which is the back end of the, the top of the pail here. And then this What I do is I take one of these, this chain for like uh, lighting, electrical wire chain thing, and I'll take this, and I'll have to clip one. Like so, put this through it, like so, and then just bend this back. Okay, there we go. So now I have this, oh, I got a place to hang it, or the customer has a place to hang it. It's like so. For the arms, You kind of saw me hook the second part of the arms on, right? So this is the first part of the arms. I got these three quarter or one inch, whatever, eye hooks. And I have some wood. No, I just cut this wood on my saw. This is hard, hard wood. In this case, it's, I think, uh, maple birch. Don't know for sure. But I cut those and then drill them all in the drill press. Then when I want some, I just grab a couple. Snap them off of there. Now in this case, I made these for a little bit smaller uh, eye hook. So there's a 316 bit in there, 
So I'm going to go with four sixteenths or whatever. I drill them out a little bit. Just make them a little bigger because, you know, parts change. All right. And we take this guy. And we know where the legs are going because one of the leg uh, uh, rivets are going to go in each of these holes. So the legs are going to be there. The arms are going to be right above it. So take this, kind of look where that is. Come down a little ways, drill a hole. This, up here, down a little ways, drill a hole. And that's where the arms are. There ain't no measure. I take this, I'm grabbing it like this with the hole, all right? And then I'm gonna go through the metal, but this is gonna go into there. As you can probably see, it's in there. Grab it with the pliers. Tighten up the rest of the way. Usually tighten it until it's just got some friction. Allow it to move a little bit. And I bring it to the hooks up and that's so that I just so that it's easier for it to assemble later. Doesn't really matter what that is, but it's what I do. You get into a habit, you get into a roll, you start, you know, I can't do it today because you guys are with me. But I normally just crank up some uh, some 80s tunes and I'm just singing along and making them in. It's raining men. Okay, a little friction on it. There we go. There he is that far. Now, here I'm going to drill the holes for the feet. It'll just be easier here on the bench. That's where the feet are going to go. Here's my pneumatic uh, rivet gun. Now, why do I have one of these? It's just to save my hands. Look how many of these I got. Since I started making these a couple years ago, I think I've bought in three or four thousand rivets. And they're about a nickel a piece. So, yeah, my hand would be crippled if I had to do all these by hand. The only ones I do by hand are the heads and difficult ones. So, let's get this guy in here. Now here I decided I'm going to put this ridge up to this ridge. So, is there an ugly side? Not really. Okay. There he goes. And just center it and drill it on that hole. This is what this rivet gun does. Done. Get that straight. Drill a second hole. There's a foot. Oh, here's an ugly side. Where are we putting that? Towards the back, I think. Let's get, a, let's get one in there right away. Make it easier for me. Get one ready. There we are. We're at the point again where we started. I'll show you again putting those we arms on. I'm just cleaning up some of this painted weird things to me. Oh, you can kind of see V8 through that. So let's put that in. You can kind of see it. A little bit late 
a little bit light on the paint there. So let's put that in. That'll be the ugly side. Just coming in like close to the edge here. And then once you're in there, take the drill and you tip it. Ish. This is light aluminum, it'll tear anyway. Even if it's metal, it'll tear pretty good. So, but it won't tear too easily through the corner of the thing. So let's take this hook and open it a little bit. Stick the whole end of the hook in there and eyeball it out that. So I can see the hook end. I can see the hole. I didn't make this, I usually stretch this out a little bit more. Where are you? Stretch that a little longer, makes it a little easier. Out the hole. After you do a couple hundred, you know, it's it gets easier. Like so. Stretch this out just a bit. Clean this paint up. Knock the liquid out of it because there's still water in it from cleaning it. I see a little light spot there again. We're going to use that. Comes off the top. Well, short and sweet today. That's what we got for you. A uh, little short video on how to make a Grinch so they can steal your Christmas and then learn to be great again. Here is, well, there. Got, oh, sorry for the tippy whippy. We got two little guys here. And, you know, 20 bucks a piece. And we're going to, have some fun at people's houses and steal their Christmas. How about that? So, if that was cool, give me a like. Um, subscribe, all that youtube -y stuff, that's all down below. There's a link over there for that. Cool, right? And uh, you can see my little dancing man, little dancing SG. Um, so, until next time, do not let the Grinch spoil your Christmas by not being there. Bye.